and then I'm going to try to get the sweet potatoes in today. And I have a problem. I always have problems. So here's my problem. We tried a new variety this year. Uh, it was a bush variety. I think it was called... I can't remember what it was called. Anyway, it was a bad idea. Bush varieties are, are not good. So the they can't compete with the weeds. And uh, uh, so I put the cow uh, across here to let her try to, to open it up for me a little bit. And she did. But then she... <laughs> She ate the vines down. <laughs> uh, so now I'm kind of guessing at where the plants are. So it's going to be another challenging day. <laughs> but anywho, so we're going to see how these, this variety does. I wish I could remember what variety it is. Uh, but I can tell you one thing. We, we, won't, we won't use it ever again. We're going to go back to Beauregard. Uh, that's the variety that's done the best for us. So let's see what we get. Got all the hills dug and uh, when I took a break I went down and got Mariah to check her records. This variety is called Georgia Red and I am not impressed. I was gonna use the title Georgia Red sucks uh, but I don't reckon I will. Hold on a second. All right so here's how we're doing so far. So, we had a lot of mush. We left these in the ground way too long. Uh, what the, the smart people say is that they should be uh, uh, harvested at 100 to 120 days. And we left them in the ground for a little over 150 days. Uh, I think she said she put them in on May 13th when she checked the records. So what happened is a lot of them just rotted in the soil. Uh, they don't like a lot of uh, moist, you know, they don't like wet soil. And we've had just a ton of rain here. I mean, like a, like a scary amount of rain here lately. I'm trying to find all of my piles. And it definitely uh, affected them. So when I say Georgia Red has not impressed me, what I should say maybe is that I haven't impressed Georgia Red. But the thing is, we've done varieties before that we just left in until we got around to getting to them. And they did great. I don't, I mean, you'll have to, I'll see if I can go back and find some of those old videos where we were just pulling out bunches of sweet potatoes, you know, the size of small children. Uh, and none of this, you know, none of the splitting, none of the getting, the, 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 some of them, some varieties get woody, and then, then they just turn to mush. And they're this disgusting, slimy, ugh, and they stink to high heavens. So, next year, we will definitely be better about site selection. I have no idea what you guys can see right now. I might not be able to use this clip. It might be so disgusting. You might be looking right up my nose. Uh, we'll be more careful about site selection. Make sure it's drier. You know, because this year we used the bottom of the field. And, yeah, that's just kind of a wetter spot. In years past, we've gone up there. And last year, we used that over there. And that's actually the wettest part of the field. And it was awful. Uh, I've got a video of that, that too, uh, of me harvesting those. And it was, it was a damn swimming pool over there. It was awful. We actually lost that entire crop. We got very little of that. Uh, look, there's already, one thing I like about these is that they put off slips easy. Which that's a really big deal. But I don't think this is a variety we will try again. We might go back with the Beauregard. We had really good luck with the Beauregard that one year. Uh, or we might try something even a little older. The Nancy 
Tennessee Hall sounds interesting. Uh, the Centennial variety sounds interesting. But the Georgia Red just is now found. I was finding a bunch of squash too. The squash had been planted right next to the sweet potatoes and so it was growing in. But what I really like is how it loosens up the soil. Like we should do sweet potato peanut uh, crop rotation because the sweet potatoes really seem to break up the soil and then of course the peanuts are good for the soil. So that's a pretty potato. And that's a nice bacon size. That's the problem with some of those varieties. You leave them in the ground and they get so gigantic. I mean, we have a large family. So we can use them in uh, in like a, like a big thing of mashed sweet potatoes. I don't know what the right word is that for. Someone might call it a casserole, but please don't because I refuse to eat anything called a casserole. Don't ask me why, I don't know. I just won't eat casseroles. There you go. We got a wheelbarrow full. We should have had, well, I'm prone to exaggeration and speculation. I feel like we could have had a whole another wheelbarrow full if we'd have gotten them out of the ground quicker. Here, maybe I can show you what one of the mush ones. This one's not too far gone. Maybe you can't really tell, but it gets raw slimy. Here's the Senate. Yeah. I probably could have cut that one up and gotten the good stuff off the back. Maybe I need to go through here and well, I've got the cow strung up right here right now, so, I mean, anything we leave, she's going to get, which is not, yeah, see, there's another, that mush, just smells awful, too. So, it's not like anything we leave is going to get wasted, she's going to get it and turn it into uh, growth and manure. So, there you go, another, uh, we're almost done, so I need to I need to, to pick whatever peanuts I'm gonna pick, and then I need to pick the tobacco, and then I need to mow this sucker down, and uh, in about a month maybe plow it, get it ready for winter. And I did not halt any manure this year, so maybe hopefully I'll haul manure this year. Let's see, I've got some challenges. I don't have, the truck I have is, is work. Oh crap, that's right, I've got a flat tire. <sighs> I, gotta, I gotta go fix the tire on my truck before sundown. Uh, but you know, it's, it's my work truck, so it's filled up in the back. I can't just use it to haul manure. Uh, my father-in-law bought an old dump truck, but we gotta, it's not ready to be running yet. So hopefully we'll get that running this year, this winter. And then I will bury this whole thing in, because we've got as much access to as much free manure, it's sawdust and manure mixed as we want. And I could literally put a foot of manure deep on this whole thing. Uh, just, just bury it. But anywho, there you go, man. Not too shabby. I wouldn't even care to speculate how many pounds that is, but it's probably, there I go. I wouldn't even care to speculate. So it's probably, and here I go speculating. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so something like this is close to a pound. Yeah. So, you know, that's probably two pounds. So, I don't know, mental math. There's probably a couple hundred, maybe two, I don't know, I'm speculating. Anyway, there you go, man. We appreciate you, thank you. Grow sweet potatoes. They're perfect, they're the uh, best. That's most calories. Calories per acre. I mean, this is a half acre. But of everything we grow, this is the most calories, the most nutrition. Uh, the, the, the least amount of effort goes into these, and they produce the most for us. Uh, they, they are, at least in the south, uh, 
they are, they are the homestead crop. That's just it. You, if you're if you're interested at all in self sufficiency or growing your own food, sweet potatoes are the place to start because it's easy calories. It's lots of calories. It's nutrient dense. Uh, it's the way to go. Ever since says beans and rice, I say or, uh, beans and sweet potatoes. And then if you want to do some corn around the edges, feel fry, free, free. But, uh, uh, well, corn's fine. I, you know, corn's fine. But beans, it's, it comes after beans and rice. Uh, beans and rice, listen to me. Beans and sweet potatoes. Oh, and squash. Uh, beans, sweet potatoes, and squash. Uh, winter squash. But the butternut squash. This stuff. These. These will store for almost a year. And they'll be fine. All right, man, there you go. Beans, sweet potatoes, and squash. We appreciate you. Thank you.